Ah, yes, we're back in Korea. And how do we know that we're back in Korea? Well, there's construction to the left of us. Cicadas all around us. <laughs> And eight dollar drinks. These are coffees. There's eight dollars. No, there's no alcohol in here. No. It's literally espresso water ice. So we figured we'd make this video about our favorite memories from our US tour because there's a lot of stuff that we didn't actually get to videotape while we're there and some amazing stories that we're gonna cherish for the rest of our lives. Oh yeah. I wanna start with one of my favorite memories from Seattle. Go for it. So we had one of our friends, Brian, who was a driver, a professional driver from Las Vegas come and help us drive because we had two cars and when Martina and I are in one car, then Brian can be driving the other car. When we went to Seattle, Brian and I went out for some ice cream because Brian's a good friend of mine. We wound up going up to the counter and she says to us, Oh, where are you guys from? And he says, Oh, I'm from Las Vegas. And she says, Oh, Las Vegas. That's really interesting. My brother's turning tricks in Las Vegas. And I thought to myself, Wait a second, did she just tell me that her brother is a prostitute? And then she wound up saying, Oh, if it was my cousin Johnny, then I'd be totally understanding because Johnny, I know what Johnny's like, he'd definitely be turning tricks. But my brother Timmy, my brother Timmy, that really hurt our family. Here's your ice cream. Why did you, I just want an ice cream. I don't want to hear about the prostitution in your family. Can... Is this supposed to be a kid's shop? Simon just licked his ice cream and walked away yeah, sadly. Yeah, yeah. I have a favorite memory from Atlanta. Ooh! Okay, so when we were grocery shopping, we got separated from each other and we couldn't find each other anywhere in the store. So I was like pushing the cart and like looking around everywhere. So this guy that works at Whole Foods came up to me and he's like, Can I help you? Like, you look like you're lost. And I said, oh no, no, it's okay. I'm actually just looking for my friend. And then he goes, Let me ask you a question. Are you taken? And naive innocent Martina was like, No, I'm, I'm planning on paying for all of this. Like, I'm not gonna take it. And he's like, No girl. Are you taking? You got a man? Then I realized I was being hit on. Within five minutes of arriving in Atlanta, you got hit on like that. And then after giggling awkwardly like a schoolgirl, I was finally like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm actually married. And he just looked me up and down and he's like, girl, tell your man that he's a lucky guy. Damn right I'm lucky. She's awesome. <laughs> I'm married her. She's mine for life. And then I ran away with my cart. I'm never to be left alone again. You've never been hit on in Korea. No. Not once. I got hit on twice in Atlanta. Atlanta twice within like five minutes. There was another guy right afterwards. At the beginning when I tried to pick up the car. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta's best. We like Atlanta. I like Atlanta. Thank you for making us feel attractive, Atlanta. <laughs> Me attractive. I don't know about you. You didn't get hit on. Didn't I though? Maybe oh. Didn't. Nobody hits on me. <laughs> I actually have my favorite story, which was from New York City. Uh -huh. And on the first day that we landed in New York, Martina went out with her friend Jackie, who she was childhood friends with, and they caught up on memories and a whole bunch of dumb shit that I didn't want to participate in. What the? And I got to walk around New York City by myself. Oh, wow. And when I was there, I was like eating cookies and cakes and ice cream and eating anything that I wanted because I'm a grown ass man. If you guys and I didn't have my wife to stop me. If you guys have our app, you would have seen Simon posting secret pictures and That's secret right. cookie videos. Eating cookies because no one could tell me no otherwise. So I pretty much did this for around six hours until around like 11.30 or midnight when I started walking home. I saw this girl who's like 18 or 19 years old and she had this like little wheelbarrow with her or something along those lines and she wound up saying, magical caramel chocolate cupcakes for sale, free samples. And I thought to myself, I love cupcakes. I want to have a cupcake. So I walk up to her and I said, can I have a free sample? Then she pulls out this little bottle of caramel and she puts some caramel on my finger and she says, just to let you know it's a little bit strong. And I thought to myself, it's caramel. How is caramel strong? And then I ate the caramel and then I realized that when she said that they were magical cupcakes, they're not magical because they're delicious. They're magical because they're full of drugs. No, and I went to New York City and a stranger put stranger danger drugs on my finger and I ate drugs from my finger from a stranger in New York City. And then when I realized this, I pretty much beelined it back home, walked upstairs, deadbolted the door behind me, and I hugged my knees until my wife came home. Oh, and then I realized that I cannot be trusted by myself because Korea has totally broken my sense of stranger danger because I trust strangers around here. Nobody will hurt me in Korea. Hey. <laughs> Nobody will give me drugs here. Everyone's nice hey, here. Listen, okay? I don't think Korea broke you. I just think that you are a naive, naive person to take. Why would you even buy cupcakes from a stranger on the street Period. Well, because I th just thought that she was like starting her own business and at 11:30 or midnight. Yes, because you know she had. Let me own, ask like, you a question: Were you drinking before this? A little bit, but that doesn't matter because I just thought that this girl is an entrepreneur ah. and that it's like it's expensive in New York City, so she's trying to run and get a name for herself. Yeah. So I thought that. Yeah. You know, Simon. I ate drugs. I didn't want to eat drugs. You ate drugs from a stranger. From a stranger. Who knows what it we're tasted in those like drugs. big drugs. 
When we were in California, we have a story to top all stories. Oh, so yeah. We were staying at that amazing Airbnb you guys saw, like mm -hmm. on the hillside with like yep. the beautiful view. Mm -hmm. It was just a gorgeous place. But across the street from us, um, the owner of the place warned us a guy just recently had an operation yeah. and he was on medication. He uh -huh. was acting a bit um, off lately, but right. he was harmless. He was just kind of angry. So I went outside to back the car up into the driveway and I saw him walking past after he threw out some garbage. So uh -huh. I did the neighborly thing. Yeah. I just oh, waved, hi, neighbor. Hello. You know, and he walked past and looked at me and then he went like this. So then I thought to myself, hmm, ah, this must be the crazy this neighbor. This must be the crazy mm. neighbor. I get out of the car and I look up and he's actually now behind the fence of his house. Yeah. And he's yelling at me. Go home, Jax. Go home. I know that you're all prostitutes. Go home. And we're thinking to ourselves, this is so confusing because maybe he thinks we're Japanese because our car it's says kimchi. eat your kimchi on it. But then we are two very white looking people. Then he's <laughs> being extremely racist by telling Japanese Japs people to go, go home. home because we have kimchi on our car. Uh -huh. So I just like completely ignore him. Whatever. And I start walking ahead inside. So that was pretty interesting. We thought that that was uh, over with mm -hmm. until uh, we went to leave the house to go meet our friend for Mexican food and we noticed couldn't actually leave the house yeah. because the neighbor drove his car down to the street and he blocked the street so that we couldn't actually leave our house <laughs> and no one could come back up either he trapped us in our house we could and we're on the top of a hill we can't walk down if we walk down it'll take like two hours it's not a hill it's no a it was a mountain yeah. we we're like on the top of a mountain this yes. place was so high up there so then we called our airbnb host and when the police came the neighbor wound up telling them I can't move my car because the tire is flat. Well, the police looked at the car and they realized that there actually are no flat tires on there. So they said, okay, can we move the car? The neighbor winds up saying, if you move the car and the tire winds up exploding, I'm going to sue you in the police department. So we wound up waiting there for three hours until another tow truck came, moved this car away, and we were able to leave. But by then, half of the night was already over. Oh, right. I totally forgot the most important part of the story. When the cops wound up walking up, then he wound up saying, okay, I know that they called you to move the car, but now that you're here, I need you to go to the house because they have suitcases full of drugs <laughs> and prostitutes there. Go in there and investigate and arrest them. He told the cops that we had a drug and prostitution ring. Yep. I love that experience more than everything else that we've had so far. Okay, when we were driving between Vancouver and Seattle, as we were crossing over to the American border, mm -hmm. we had literally just crossed over. Like, passports, everything's finished. Maybe like five seconds five after seconds crossing afterwards. the border. Simon was asleep and Susie was asleep. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we hit America, I swear to you guys, I looked out the window I don't believe her because I didn't see this at all. A freaking bald eagle was flying right beside our window. <laughs> I'm a bald eagle. I and think I was it's like, BS. <laughs> no, and I like no. slapped Lee and pointed, and Lee can prove it. She saw the bald eagle as well, but mm -hmm. Simon and Susie missed out on the most American thing I've that ever seen. That eagle came to welcome us with all the freedoms that America has to offer. I imagine that it was wearing a tiny tank top that was like star spangled, and it had like two tiny machine guns on its back because I could not believe that I saw that bald eagle. <laughs> Well, that's it for storytelling time about what happened to us while we are in the U.S. We have a couple more stories that we're going to share in our blog post. So make sure you click on the link right here so you can check it out in all its glory. Are you going to include the one about you getting robbed? I got robbed in New York! All right, we'll tell those stories. <laughs> also, what I'd like to know from you guys is do you have any cool stories to share with us about cities you've been to or cities you live in now?